Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So before I say a bit about my video today, I want to say a very, very, very big thank you. Because earlier this week, I reached 10,000 subscribers. I still really can't believe it. So to every one of you that has watched, given me the thumbs up, left a nice comment, thank you so much. Uh, I really do appreciate it so very much. So thank you. But now on with today's video and in the Mixed Media Emporium we are continuing with the prompt of small things and this week our prompt or our challenge for the week is puzzles. So puzzles could be jigsaw puzzles, crosswords, word search, Jenga, dominoes, Lego, anything you think at all that's puzzle related. Now I have this puzzle piece, it's a large puzzle piece and I got this a while ago in Happy Mail from Patricia Stubbs and I'll leave a link to Patricia's channel below and you know if you visit her please do say that you've come over from here. So I've decided, I thought about altering this puzzle piece but I've decided to do something a bit different and really what I'm doing is I'm using that jigsaw puzzle piece as my inspiration and I'm going to make what I'm calling a puzzler's journal. So in other words, a journal for people who like puzzles. So I'm starting by cutting my pages and I'm going to make each page actually a pocket. So there's going to be six uh, pages, double one each side obviously would make 12, but we actually need 12 pieces and I'm making these roughly four and a half inch squared. So just using my cutter there just to get them roughly to size. Once I've got them to size, what I'm going to do is I want to make these look a little bit like that jigsaw piece. So I want to put some, uh, I, can't, I can't think how to describe it, but just holes. I'm going to use my uh, circle punch and cut kind of semi-circles in these at various points. So, of course, you could do this with scissors. I just found it easier using the circle punch. So I'm going to put one on each side and I'm just trying to get this roughly in the centre. I'm not measuring them, but getting it roughly in the centre. I should say this is cardstock that I'm using here. And I use a slightly thicker watercolour paper, quite a heavy watercolour paper. For the cover but I'll come to that in just a moment. I did notice that some of my sizes weren't entirely even but it, it doesn't matter. I just make it work. So cutting a kind of half circle on each side, just trying to line it up although it wouldn't matter if it was off centre really. And then I'm going to do one in the top of the pocket. So all 12 are going to be done like that and I do try to do them in pairs so that as far as possible they match up but you'll see later I didn't exactly get that right. Anyway I'm, I've now got my thicker piece of watercolour and I'm going to make this around about four and a half inches square. I want my cover to be slightly bigger than the actual individual pages, although they will all line up on the spine. So just trying to keep this at normal speed. It does make the video a little bit longer, but I know many of you prefer to see it at longer speed. 
or sorry, not at longer speed, but at normal speed. So, I'm now just going to mark the centre down one side of my covers. I want to get roughly the centre point because I'm going to be doing a bit of cutting here. On this piece, I want to kind of do the bit on the jigsaw that protrudes. And I'm just measuring how wide the actual punch is so that I know how roughly where I'm going to cut my hole here. Because I'm actually going to do this the opposite way. I'm not going to cut the hole this time. I'm actually going to cut and leave a semicircle protruding. So if you're not a member of the Mixed Media Emporium but you'd like to join, then I will leave a link to the group below. But please be aware there are a number of questions that you've got to answer to gain entry to the group. They're not difficult questions. One of them simply asks, you know, why you want to join the group. Unfortunately, if you don't answer the questions, then, you know, we have to decline that. We keep the group very safe for our members and you know we do from time to time get people trying to join who are really not interested in art or craft at all so we do try to to keep it for people who are interested in being part of a group working on these prompts if you don't see the questions then do like myself or nina know and we'll see what we can do about that the other thing about the group is it is prompt related so you know when you're posting we ask you only to post things related to the prompts but our prompts are very broad you don't have to do the exact same project as us all we ask is that you do something that is related to the prompt so I've cut here around about half an inch in, but I'm going to create a little semicircle. And as I say, that's just to make it look a bit like a jigsaw. And I do that on both pieces of the, the, the covers, so the back and the front. But when I get this done, I feel it's just a bit too blocky. You know, when I look at the jigsaw piece, it's got quite curvy lines, almost organic in shape. And although I don't mind my internal pages being a bit squarer, I want the outside cover to look a bit more like the jigsaw piece. So you'll see here that I'm just going to draw a bit of a line, a bit of a wavy line, just to make it look a bit more like that jigsaw. And then I'm going to cut into that and I will also make a hole on the other side that will be the side of the spine. And with this piece I'm also doing top and bottom and again I'll do that on both the front cover and the back cover. I wanted, in a sense, to be able to get little glimpses of what lies on the pages beneath. So that, in a sense, is part of the puzzle. This is quite tough because this was quite thick paper. And even although I'm just using the first bit as a template. I'm still having to press pretty hard. Now what I do is I prep all my pages first before I actually go on to decorate them. So you will see me doing 
an amount of decorating in a few minutes. Looking again at this, I see the shape of the hole there and I, again I just want to make this a little bit more organic looking. So just kind of free cutting it there. I haven't marked it this time and I'm just trying to, to get that cut. It's quite thick paper, quite tough, quite difficult trying to, to cut that kind of shape into it, but I just persevere with it. And of course I do that on both pieces. And of course this could be done with all the semicircles. So I'm now just going to erase the pencil lines. Now I'm going to punch holes so that the pages and the covers can all be bound together. So I'm just punching the covers to begin with. I think around about a quarter of an inch in. Just one on each side there. And then what I'll do is I'll use the covers as the actual templates in order to punch the rest of the pages. Once that's done, I want to just kind of look at the sizes. Now these don't all have to match, all the holes don't have to be the same, only the holes where I'm going to use them to bind them together needs to be the same. But what I want to do now is to look at the size of a possible tag to go into the pockets. So although I've got the hole punched there, I the hole from the sides, I don't mind if the tag is actually showing through that, but I will need to leave sufficient room for glue, so the glue will take up potentially a quarter of an inch on either side. So I'm just looking there for at the size that I'm going to make my tags. Again along the bottom there will be possibly a quarter of an inch. So I was thinking that I might want to make the tags something like three and a half inches and maybe two and a half wide. But I had an off cut of paper from earlier and I just decided to use that. So decided that whatever size that was, I would make the tags that way. So I'm just checking the size of that. It's about just short of three and three quarters. So that's the length that I make it in the end. I'm just looking how many I can get out of here and I make it two and a half. So I'll actually get three from each piece of card, which will give me the six that I need for the pockets. So once I have those cut, I also want to put a bit of an organic shape on the top. And again, I want that kind of piece that protrudes because that will become the top of my tag journal card type thing. So I'm just going to roughly draw it. But again, some of them I just freehand when I come to cut them. And I'm just going to cut that out and then I also put some holes in the side that I just free hand as well. Now the paper is a bright white, I want it more muted. So at this point I put them all into that tin foil tray along with a couple of these pages that just came from papers given out a conference, so just recycling those and I'm just going to coffee stain them and I dry them 
off in the oven this time. Now, I know that somewhere I have a puzzle book. I was going to cover the pages with puzzles from the puzzle book. I couldn't find the puzzle book. So I did have some newspapers that were due to go in the recycling and I decided that I would take the crosswords and puzzles out from here. Now some of the crosswords had been completed and I thought that those could be used if needs be as background collage. But there were also all these little puzzles that hadn't been done at all and puzzles that I'd never even heard of. So kind of Sudoku-like but different. So I thought I would just start to cut these up because these will go into my Puzzler's journal. So my papers are coffee stained, they've been dried and I've given them a quick iron. And now the sun is up and streaming in my studio window. I did start this around 6.30 in the morning. So liking the way that those have come out, I didn't have them soaking in the coffee for terribly long, but it was long enough just to get rid of that kind of pure white from them. So on to the next stage. And that is to start to glue some of these pieces together. Now this is where it might have been better to punch the holes after because I did end up with some mismatches, but I just decided to live with that. So I'm going to take two pieces for the pages and then I'm just going to take some glue. I just took one that had a nozzle because I thought this would be easier to control than a glue stick and the paper, it being cardstock, it was just slightly heavier than the glue stick might have held. So just doing it this way. So I'm taking my 12 pieces and I'm going to pair them all up. Just running the bone folder down all the edges just to make sure that those are adhering fully. Okay, so I now have six of those. And my little tags, when they're completed, will fit in. I was going to cut some more holes in the tags to make them look even more like a jigsaw piece rather than perhaps the end piece of a jigsaw, you know, the kind of corner pieces, but decided that if I took too much out of them, then it wasn't going to leave me much scope for sticking anything onto them. So I left them as is. So since the puzzles are about words and numbers, I decided that I'd look out a few stencils to actually put some background onto my pages. I decided not to stick down the crosswords onto the main pages and instead I'm just going to use those kind of basic stencils. I didn't use that one and this is an Andy Skinner one and I end up mainly using it and I'm just going to use an actual stenciling brush along with some black stays on and just doing a kind of rough pattern. I'm looking for the numbers and the bits of the words, it's letters more than words I'm looking for. Just going to stencil that unevenly over each page. And this really is just to give me a bit of background interest. Now, this would be an ideal thing to use with spray inks. You could get some really fast coverage here. This took me a, a little while to do all the pages, but I quite like stenciling this way. I have used the cosmetic brushes before, but I don't know, I always find when I use those that I end up getting 
more underneath the stencil. Don't know why I was taking so long to decide which bit to stencil because it really was just for background interest, but you know that's just the way I work sometimes. Although this video is just over 30 minutes long, the actual project took me a lot longer than that. You know, as I've said before, I, I, I don't work quickly, I just enjoy what I'm doing. It's, it, it's not about a race. But it probably took me three, three hours maybe. But that included the time for doing the papers, drying them in the oven. I should have actually had them prepared the day before, but that didn't happen. So by the time they dried, and of course I, I kept having to move them about so that they were all getting a kind of turn drying. And then of course I ironed them. So that's roughly the effect I'm looking for, a mix of letters and numbers, and I'll do that on all the pages and on both sides. Then, once they're all done, I'm just going to go around all the edges with the black stays on. Using my stencil brush in there where it's a little bit more difficult. The reason I cut the holes beforehand is once they were coffee dyed, I find that you know you get a nice finish on the, the edges if you do it that way. But as I say, I did get some mismatched pieces because it was too difficult then trying to match all of them together, you know, the, the, the two pieces that I'd cut together at the same time. So I've got my little puzzles and I'm just going to get them cut in a way that they will actually fit on the back of my little tags. I probably should have measured them beforehand before I started cutting too much into the tags. But I didn't, so now it's a case of making these fit. And then I'm just going to put these down with a glue stick. I can't centre them, you know, and I'm just going to live with that. As I say, if I was doing this again, I'd maybe think a little bit more carefully about the sizes of anything going on the tags. But at the end of the day, I think they worked out quite well, so not too concerned. Just get my book for gluing on here. I sometimes glue right on top of my kind of desk there on top of the paper and then it gets all sticky and then I'll put something else down and it gets sticky and I thought oh, get the book out. And I know that the puzzle book that I couldn't find will turn up tomorrow. It's funny how that happens. You know you've got something just can't find it. But when tomorrow, when I'm looking for something else, it will suddenly appear. And I'm going to do that with the rest of the tags. So, now that I've got those done, I am at the point where I'm going to start to decorate the front. And I just decided to pull out some more Tim Holtz paper dolls. I had been going to put more of a background on, but to be honest, I quite like the figures just against the background. I will be adding a couple of more things to some of them just shortly. But what I'm going to do with these is to just use my heavier glue again, rather than the, the, the glue stick, just because the paper dolls are quite thick. Now, some of these are going to be too big and I will just cut bits off. I don't mind little bits sticking up over the top, but some 
for example there, part of the bottom was going to be off. So that's okay, I'll cut that off once it's dry. But again, I'm just going to make sure that that's fully adhered. Just using a small bone folder just to push that into place. So, when I came to put this gentleman down, I realised that he was sitting on something and then I remembered that I had these Wood Effect Alphabet stickers. These came from Hobbycraft, I bought them years ago, so I don't know if they still got them or not. But they're a bit like Scrabble pieces and I did remember that I had these and I was able to put my hands on them, so... Quite, quite unusual that I was able to do that, but I did. So I'm just looking here, looking at maybe where there's a repeat of some letters, just so that if I do come to do something where I want to spell a name or something, I'll hopefully have enough letters left in future. So just picking these randomly. And just looking at how he would be seated on it. Then I decide to take another one to put at the side and then I put another one at the other side. So it makes it look as if it's some sort of seat rather than him just sitting in mid-air. So I've taken the back off that one already and I'll just put that right into place. And then I'm going to glue him down, although I think I actually go on and I stick another one down just so it could be seen behind him on the other side. And I think these go really nice against that kind of background, which is quite simple in a way, just the coffee stained and just a little bit of stenciling. And I'll do this with a couple of others as well. And again, I think it keeps that theme of using the kind of letters and just adds a bit more interest. So I'm now just going to go round each figure with a bit of a bit of what? Why have I forgotten the name? It's Stabilo All. Do apologise. I was up very, very early. I've been awake since about 3am, up since 3.30. And I think my brain is now at the point where it needs a rest. So here we are, the final thing. I've just put these ring clips on, just a very rough piece to hold the journal closed. And I've also put some letter stickers onto the tags. And I've put a little tiny Ace of Hearts. It looks like a playing card, just a little charm there. Now on the backs of the pages, I could actually add some more puzzles or I could add some paper for journaling. You know, that squared paper would fit well with this. 
and you know the the stuff that I coffee stained but I've left it as is just now there is a bit more that I would like to do I did do a full stitch around there I might do some more around here I did basically run out of time and run out of a bit of steam I think just because I'd been up so early but this will give you a good feel for how the journal's actually looking and how I might develop it further so I think it's a little bit different as I say I'm calling it a puzzler's journal this would be a good journal to make for someone that likes crossword puzzles sudoku word searches other little pieces could be put into the pockets. That one with the two girls, I put on the wrong side. So I think that does show that I'm a little bit tired today. So anyway, I hope you've liked this project. I hope you'll join in with us in the Mixed Media Emporium. Nina will, of course, have a video this week. Once again, I'd like to thank you to everyone who's subscribed, everyone who gives a thumbs up and especially everyone who leaves a kind comment. So, as always, thanks so much for watching. Please be safe, take care, and hope to see you again next week. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.